The electrophilic substitution mechanism occurs when there is a reaction of a benzene ring. And not just a benzene ring being present, the ring itself needs to change. We can represent the benzene ring with the hexagon with the circle inside it for the delocalized electron cloud, or we can just use the formula C6H6 for the benzene ring, but obviously if there are groups already on the ring, it won't be C6H6. And what occurs in simple terms is one negative seeking species replaces another. And in electrophilic substitution, it's always an H plus ion that is replaced. Now, an electrophile, if we break that word into two pieces, is something that is negative seeking. And so really what we're talking about is something that is a positive ion or something that is electron deficient delta plus. Why does it happen? Well, the pi cloud of delocalized electrons in the center of the benzene ring is electron rich, and therefore it attracts the positive ion or the electron deficient atom in the electrophile to itself. There are two types of electrophilic substitution mechanism that you need to know about. There is nitration, which involves concentrated nitric acid, HNO3, as our source of our electrophile, and it involves a concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst. There's also Friedel Crafts acylation, and the electrophile comes from an acyl chloride, and we use an aluminium chloride catalyst. This reaction is very slow at room temperature, so we need to do this under reflux in the presence of a dry ether solvent. There are other choices, but it's really important that we have a non-aqueous solvent. In nitration, the electrophile comes from the nitric acid in a reaction with the sulfuric acid catalyst. And this is actually an interesting reaction as it's happening between two acids. But since the sulfuric acid is a stronger acid, the nitric acid therefore acts as a base and accepts one of the sulfuric acid's protons. And so in step one, we end up producing H2NO3 plus, which is the conjugate acid to nitric acid's base. And we also produce HSO4 minus, which is the conjugate base for the sulfuric acid. And then in step two, the H2NO3 breaks apart into the nitronium ion, which has got the formula NO2 plus, and this is our electrophile, and we also produce water. This reaction can be shown in two steps, as I've done at first, or we can combine it into one step, where we've got the nitric acid reacting with the sulfuric acid, as before, going straight through to the nitronium ion electrophile and the water and the HSO4 minus. In the mechanism itself, it's important to remember that the delocalized pi cloud of electrons is electron rich. There are six electrons in it, one electron from each of the carbon atoms. And so it is attracted to the positive electrophile, the nitronium ion and the electrophile attacks the benzene ring. And we show this using the curly arrow that I'm showing now. Now, curly arrows, remember, always show the movement of electrons. And that's what we're showing here. But we must say that the electrophile attacks the benzene ring. And the symbolism of this curly arrow is that we're showing that a new bond is forming between the carbon atom and the nitrogen atom from the electrophile. And then this moves on through to make an intermediate chemical that I'm showing here. Now, there's two really important features of this intermediate. First of all, the delocalized pi cloud has been partially broken because those six electrons have now become four, because two of the electrons in that pi cloud are now involved in the bond between the carbon and the nitrogen. And so there's only four electrons there. And so the ring that was representing all six of those electrons needs to be incomplete. And so what I'd like you to do is imagine that there was a line across the benzene ring dividing it two thirds on one side and one third of the other. And so the benzene ring's delocalized pi cloud now cannot extend beyond this purple line. And so that's why I've got an incomplete circle now to show that we've got two thirds of the electrons that we had before. 
Not only that, it is now positively charged. And this also makes sense from the point of view of conservation of charge because the reactants were positively charged because of the electrophile. We've only got one intermediate now and we need to conserve that charge and we need to have a positive charge showing in that benzene ring. And so the benzene is unstable because it's positively charged, but it regains its stability by taking those two electrons back. And it takes them back from the bond between this carbon atom and this hydrogen atom. And so we show a curly arrow like so. And this curly arrow is symbolizing the bond breaking and the two electrons from that bond going back into the pi cloud. And so we produce this compound, which would be referred to as nitrobenzene, and we produce the hydrogen ion that has been replaced by the nitronium ion. If you've been asked to simply draw the mechanism, you just need to show this section. We don't need to show the structure of the organic product unless we've been explicitly commanded to do so. Now, that hydrogen ion that's been replaced is far too reactive to exist by itself. And so what happens is it reacts with the HSO4- minus that was produced during the generation of the electrophile. And this produces H2SO4, which was our original catalyst. So in this way, our catalyst has been regenerated and can be used again, which is part of the definition of a catalyst. If we want to make sure that we only add one nitro group to our benzene, we need to make sure when we're warming it up in this reaction that we keep the temperature below 55 degrees C. If we go above 55 degrees C, the temperature rise means that multiple substitutions occur. And so we get more than one nitro group joining the benzene ring and we could get as many as three being added. This allows us to produce all sorts of different nitro compounds that have got huge range of uses in things such as pharmaceuticals and dyes and explosives. By far the most famous nitrobenzene compound is TNT, which has got three nitro groups because we've had substitution occurring three times with this methyl benzene. During Friedel Crafts acylation, the electrophile is generated from an acyl chloride. There are obviously a huge range of acyl chlorides, but what they all have in common is they have this carbonyl group and a chlorine attached to the same carbon. And on this occasion, I'm showing a chain of two carbon atoms, and so this acyl chloride would actually be called ethanoyl chloride. Acyl chlorides themselves are actually weak electrophiles, but we actually convert it into something different, which is a stronger electrophile. And so if we show an equation for the generation of the electrophile, we start with our acyl chloride and it reacts with something that is referred to usually as a halogen carrier. And that's got a really important role to play here because what it does is it interacts with one of the lone pairs on the chlorine atom in the acyl chloride. And it's able to do this because the aluminium in aluminium chloride is actually electron deficient. It's only got six electrons in its outer shell. And so what it's able to do is accept a lone pair of electrons from the acyl chloride. And as that lone pair of electrons is pulled away from the chlorine, the chlorine as part of the acyl chloride in turn pulls electrons away from the carbon that is bonded to the oxygen within the acyl chloride. And so we can show this with curly arrows. We can show the curly arrow between the lone pair on the chlorine and the aluminium. That's showing a new bond is forming. And then we can show a curly arrow from the carbonyl to chlorine bond being broken and the chlorine is taking both of the electrons within that bond. And importantly, this produces something referred to as an acylium ion. And this is a carbocation that's been generated as a result of this. And it is a much stronger and more stable electrophile than the acyl chloride that we had originally was. And not only do we generate the acylium ion, our electrophile, we produce AlCl4 minus. 
The mechanism for friedel crafts acylation is really similar to nitration. In step one, our benzene ring is attracted to the electrophile, the acylium ion. And so the acylium ion attacks the benzene ring and a new bond forms, which we're showing with this curly arrow here. This leads to the formation of a positively charged intermediate, exactly the same as in nitration. And this is unstable because the delocalized pi cloud only has four electrons in it instead of the six, which it needs to be considered stable. And it's also positively charged. And so it regains its stability by breaking the bond between the carbon and the hydrogen and taking those two electrons back into the pi cloud, topping it back up to six electrons, which is what it needs to become stable. And this turns into our acylated aromatic compound, which if we'd used ethanoyl chloride would actually have been called phenyl ethanone. And not only do we produce that, we also produce our hydrogen ion. As before, you wouldn't need to show this as part of the mechanism, but it's important to have awareness of what we're producing in this mechanism. And also, as with nitration, the catalyst is regenerated by reacting with the hydrogen ion that has been replaced. And so the hydrogen ion, which is highly reactive, reacts with the AlCl4- that was produced when we made our electrophile in the first place. And this turns into AlCl3, that's our catalyst being regenerated, and also HCl. And so in Friedel Crafts acylation, as well as our phenyl ketone, phenyl ethanone in this case, we also produce HCl as a byproduct. And so in general, in electrophilic substitution, there are always two steps. And in each of those steps, there is just one single curly arrow. And we also need to remember that there is a positive intermediate in any electrophilic substitution mechanism. 